Hey there, and welcome to the final part of the Arknights SSS Flawless Guides. So this is part four of four, or unless we get more in the future, then I guess we will have more parts, but I'm not looking forward to that because, as I mentioned in my previous videos, I do not like Arknights SSS. I... It's mostly because I find it extremely tedious, so I'm going to apologize up front. I will probably sound very lackluster throughout this video. Uh, it's being recorded in one shot and posted as is, so all mistakes and everything will be posted. Any additions or any edits or suggestions or anything like that, I'll put it in the description below. Obviously, if you have anything you want to add, feel free to comment, like, and subscribe. And uh, let's get into it. So today we'll be looking at Glebe Mining Platform. I haven't played this in probably a month or so. So let's see how this goes. I'll be using the more or less exactly the same team as always. I, um, I opened my previous videos and realized that I think there was one unit different in each of them. But the core team has stayed more or less the same. Um, or is the same for all of them. So in this one, if you, I start and you notice the Saria is probably, it might be different from some of the others. I, I don't, I, I honestly don't know. I think some of them have Heidi. I completely lost track of what's what. I think one of the video, yeah, one of the videos I uploaded had Heidi in it instead of Saria. Anyway, I am not gonna worry too much about it. Let's get into it with this. And so, quick dis discussion, Saga's a great operator for for uh, the Vanguard portion of SSS. It's, she's really good for those early openings, especially late in the run, when those early enemies can still do a lot of damage. Um, her passive, her talent, helps her stay alive while generating some DP and while you're working on other parts of your setup. Black Knight, similarly, is a very cheap cost with the... Uh, with the tag setups that we did, Vanguard 1, or Vanguard A, this means that we're able to essentially get a the same as a caster A setup with Black Knight. So, both Black, both Vanguard and caster have the same buff, and in this way we are able to help cycle while generating some DP through the use of Black Knight. We are a very supporter-heavy team, running six supporters, and we will pick up more throughout the run if the opportunity presents. And our core DPS falling with Golden Glow, and... So, let's get into it. Um, in this one, I have Saria on the team. I, I mean, I guess it's a flex spot now. I originally intended to just use the exact same team for everything, but whatever. For most of these maps, I will probably be running Golden Glow S2. Uh, the boss tends to prefer Golden Glow S3, if anything. And the basic strategy is going to more or less be exactly the same for every single map. Uh, it's just going to be making sure that you don't screw up, which I do very often. So uh, if you screw up a lot, this is probably a very good guide for you. So the premise is we are going to be setting up our ranged operators uh this is stage one so it's not going to matter all that much but you want to get your dps units down so the ones that are going to be providing buffs and cycling them and i'm not going to be assigning any operators until i've successfully uh cycled all of the buff giving operator operators that i want to use so right now i'm just going to, have to wait for Aya to complete her little stint as a volcano and then bam now we start assigning and then we continue until we get one of the operators back that we need to continue assigning and now roberta's roberta's here as a flex one of the nice things about roberta is that she's a low ground supporter so we can still get more of these assignment points um, using a melee slot. And this will play more of a role later in the run. So, I've cycled everybody. Let's start assigning, and I got another Black Knight. Go. Go. 
Don't forget to press your vanguards. Like I said, there's going to be many, many mistakes on my part. Now, we already have four buffs. I'm not... Or three buffs. Might as well cycle this more. And we got Aya back. So as soon as I have the DP, I can place Aya down. And we are done for the rest of the run. Now, again, this is only level one. But we're going to be using exactly the same strategy for every single floor of this... Of every single tower. Um, and then, as I mentioned, I am extremely tired of SSS. I don't enjoy grinding it. I just do exactly the same thing every single time it comes up. So, the same strategy will happen for every single floor of every single tower. If you watch multiple of these guys with me, you will see it is exactly the same thing. The only thing that's going to be different is, you know, what enemies actually show up and the placements. I would say Sloma has more interesting placements just because, you know, there's multiple lanes and they can be a bit more varied. But you're still using the same operators, same placements and everything. So one of the nice things that you'd be looking for as an additional unit to pick up from these uh, these recruitments here, you're going to be looking for probably a vanguard or other supporters or casters or snipers. We don't take any guards, we don't take any medics. The only time I would really take a medic, you uh, note that I did take medic B. So it would be something that you can just use to panic, reset an operator if they do happen to die. It should not be as likely in Glebe Mining Platform that you will be losing operators, but if you get a chance to get, let's say, a Lancet 3, which doesn't take any deployment slots, that's always a nice operator to pick up uh, if you're using Medic B for that purpose. Otherwise, specialists, uh, specialists, especially something like a Cliffheart, Gladia, uh, Snowscent, and one of those, they're relatively cheap to pick up, uh, uh, to place as DP cost, and you can place high or low ground to reset an operator. So, uh, if the opportunity presents, I will pick one up and, sh and maybe display that a little bit, but otherwise for now, 12F is a little bit on the expensive side. For what I want, and Sora is a very cheap supporter, so I'm going to take Sora to get to help with that. Weedy is not terrible, neither is Evan. I haven't built my vigil, but any of these options are good options here, I would say. I'm going to lean towards the Gumi, and we continue. I don't tend to start with the defenders. I don't find it's terribly important. We did not get a single medic. Oh, sorry, not Medic. Archer. There we go. Alright, so let's keep cycling. We got another one. Let's keep going. So one of the main things to remember is that avoid... Avoid assigning an operator while you still have one of the operators that you want to reset in. Or at least pay attention to when preparate when recuperation goes to preparation. If you're going to be doing that. And now we're pretty much done on DP. 
Uh, we can go ahead and swap into this. We just need one more Black Knight and uh, Aya to go down. I can find my Black Knight, apparently not. I'll just go ahead and place Justice. Attack speed buffs are always fine anyway. And we can go ahead and just relax for another 40 kills. Very fun gaming. You can always start stacking more Vanguard buffs. And defender buffs get more of a D, get more of a block count. Later on, when we get more vanguards, we'll be able to very quickly and easily stack up uh, a four stack of vanguard buffs, and that means that Mudrock, with her four SP cost on her S2, can just spin to win for the rest of the run as well. Alright, absolutely riveting content. Let's continue. I, I truly don't remember any of these maps, so we are going somewhat blind. Cheobi's a nice pickup here. I'm going to go ahead with and take that now. And as I mentioned, getting a Vanguard is really nice. We don't really care too much about the other options. I'm going to take the Saleech. That's a, those are two very nice pickups for rounding out the team and getting better balance on the buffs. So remember I mentioned getting four vanguard buffs, so now we should be getting to that fourth vanguard buff. We can put Sari down and get a four block Mudrock that is constantly getting her S2 active. So at this point we're just waiting for... We're waiting more for Golden Globe to get her skill up, as well as getting an Aya. And, but we have now run out of supporters and assignment points, so we're going to make do with an Angelina. Not that it matters this early in the run, but some but softbox like this can't happen. 
So this was a bit of my mistake earlier in the run. When I had four caster buffs already, I placed the Aya down. I could have just left Aya for the rest of the run as is. That would not have been too problematic either. Um, or what I could have done also is just waited to pick up the Chaobi as well, who was in the, the draw pile. So any of these three options, uh, technically any of the four options are, are feasible. Um, I did mention before about using specialists, so I will take the Gladia now that, that the opportunity has presented itself. And we are going to be looking for another sniper, which we just got in the form of Cruise. So overall, I really like the balance of the team. Um, I've gotten all the buffing units that I want. I have my DPS units. I would, at this point, only really be looking to get more supporters. Uh, and possibly maybe another Vanguard or Sniper. But overall, we're quite... We're quite set. Uh, what am I doing? So see here how I have I will be getting my fourth sniper buff. Let's say I don't get a sniper from this full pull, which I actually did not. So now, instead of worrying about it, I can just reset my Exu and I will guarantee get my my buff very shortly. There we go, and all done. So 
So, in terms of priority, Equipment Activation Valve is the highest priority for this team. It's just very helpful to get the buffs as fast as possible, especially on those ranged operators. Once you have your once you have your Aya and Golden Glow ready, you're pretty much done for the rest of the map for the most part in most of these cases. Um, otherwise, second highest would be the reassignment transmitter. Let's say once you finish your uh, Golden Glow buffs, you got your five sniper buffs. You don't feel you need the snipers anymore. You can start you can start rotating them out of the lineup for that specific map with this reassignment transmitter. And otherwise, recuperation and preparation area transmitters are always useful um, for just picking up units that you just need at that time. この程度の戦いですし、余力を残すことをお許しください。I've personally never found a use for emergency recall box, otherwise, so in this case I would be most likely taking reassignment transmitter. If I already have one reassignment transmitter, um, let's say in the previous selection the the buff box was not there, the equipment activation valve was not there, and I took the reassignment transmitter, at this point I'd probably be looking towards the recuperation area transmitter. In this case, again, we're not using any, any buffs, so we'll leave it as is. The Aya and the Mudrock should be taking the debuffs from the Knight here. So, I'd be taking another equipment activation valve. If it shows up three times in a row, I would take it three times in a row. Uh, otherwise, the rest of them, I would be aiming to just diversify them. If I don't get the equipment activation valves.
That is a very interesting option. I don't think there's anything that you can go wrong with here. One thing that you will notice is that um, snipers, snipers casters are never bad. I don't think we need a cardigan given that we already have three defenders. Touch is an option. I will go ahead and take the the meteor. The faster that you can get, we have another very similar choice here. That that last choice was a bit unfortunate because we just took another sniper right before that choice. And now we're at five snipers, so it's relatively high for a run like this. One thing that we can start doing is that once the Golden Glow is completed, we can start a, building up another set of sniper stacks so that we can put Gnosis down, who can permanently freeze with, I think it's four sniper stacks on just his auto attacks. Getting one of our defenders here, which we just got. Nice. Okay, let's start cycling properly. This out, this out. These are fine. And now we're just looking for our golden glow. There it is. So, now we are relatively early. We're very behind on our caster buffs. We have very few vanguard buffs. So now, as things come up, we can start building towards a, an attack speed. An attack speed setup of sorts. Oh, I just noticed this buff is not even finished. I thought it was for for some reason I thought the buff was finished already. I'm gonna go ahead and use an exu for the attack speed in this case. We're almost towards the end, so I'm not going to bother finishing the suzerain stack, but Mission accomplished. 
新しい機能を開発できそうねジャスティスナイトロドスへの帰還が待ち遠しいわ So, I would like to add a couple of supporters to help with the rotations go. Courier is also not a bad choice. Since there's no supporter here, we have more than enough snipers. Cease is a very expensive sniper, too. Um, Liscarb is not terrible. So, in this case, it would be between these two. I would lean towards Reed, getting, that, getting some more Vanguard low ground DP going. So you can open, let's say, a read, then go into a saga, or you get that one Vanguard buff, get some faster DP generation. Uh, otherwise, also helps boost up your Mud Rock faster, if that is something that you need for that map. Um, let's. I will be trying a different strategy than I normally do with this map. Oh, that is my mistake. Aya should have been uh, to the under sail each. And we will be aiming to put this here. That is quite unfortunate. This is what... This is what things like Gladia are good for. Unfortunately, we never got our buff finished. Which is quite a bit annoying. Okay, clearly this was a mistake. And now we're going to have to deal with the top lane separately as well. I would normally be placing further back, facing up. But this is becoming quite annoying. At this point, I may as well use some of these buffs. Oh, 
前線で作戦を指揮するのにも最適のスタイルってのがあるんだよ。At this point, there's not much reason to be hunting for another Golden Glow.、Uh, there's virtually no time left to put her back up anyway. So, one of the things that would have helped a lot would be to get、um, another defender down where Gumi was after the Golden Glow, or even putting the Roberta down where the Gumi was. And this would have solved a lot of the problems that I just faced in that run. Otherwise, as I mentioned before, you can also just、uh, place further back to the right and facing up with your Golden Glow and Aya. This one is a little bit trickier, if I remember correctly. And it is nice to have the third defender for this one. I'm going to go ahead and change for S2, Saria. Unsurprisingly, we're going to be setting up in the middle. And unfortunately, I did not get any vanguards. Well, that's not very nice, is it? Into the rotations.
Once we get the AO up, it should be far less of a problem on this map. Now we do have the additional, we do have the additional one deployment slot. You could use that for, let's say, a suzerain, since suzerain's buffs are not terribly. It doesn't matter too much to get suzerain's buffs going. Uh, in the meantime, I will be using Gnosis in AO's spot. You can also play something like a um, a Sculptor here or here. If you have more defenders, this is where it comes in handy because you are blocking three lanes and you'll be able to buff up that block count. that Aya is. There she is. Took long enough. We may or may not already be done the map by the time we finish our game. So that's where more supporter and um, given what's been happening, I could be, I could start using, I could have been using the Golden Glow to help buff that caster slot as well. Uh, I could have also used the Gladia to reset the Aya before rotating her out. Seeing how late it was in the run, that's something that I should have done. I was mostly preoccupied on other things. Now, this is a very interesting map. Getting block counts up is pretty, pretty useful for this map. The other, the other thing is, when we are going to be killing the boss is also quite important. Uh, we have definitely many, many, many placements that we can be using here. One thing that I like doing is I will be probably setting up a my Sculptor here, having one Defender here, one Defender here, Golden Glow here, and Aya here. Actually, the Defender should be here. We don't really need any of these. I will take the Shining to get a reset if necessary. And I... Yes, we're taking Chiav. It would have been very nice to get an, another supporter in that selection, but apparently not. So, here we go. Now, here, Golden Glow S2 or S3 are both feasible. Uh, if you're doing S3, you just have to manage it a bit more. I will go ahead and use S2 for this. That means we're going to be killing the boss quite late in this, in this run. But it should not... It should not pose too much difficulty. So we got did we get vanguards? We got vanguards. I can't remember if it goes top or bottom first. I love having four four vanguards and not starting with any of the any of the two block ones. It's always a beautiful moment to start with. Okay, so this is looking okay to start. I'm going to want to. I really want one of my vanguards for the top lane, but apparently I cannot pull it. 
私の炎は熱いよどの矢を弓を引いて狙いを定めて This is terribly obnoxious. And here we go, the boss has spawned. Let's get it let's get back into our habit of rotating. And we are looking for snipers, which we still have a lot left of in the pool. And we finally got Shiav. So these things are going to start building up and blocking our. Deploy. Going to go ahead and place this. And now we should probably press this, get that the last bit of DP, and swap into our. I should have put the. I should have, this was another mistake, put the Roberta before putting the Saria down and get the Roberta rotated as well. That was a mistake on my part. So at this point, I might just give up and go ahead and use the Golden Glow as is, as we need to start adding some damage to this lineup. And we got Aya. So we just have to keep placing these until you're satisfied with your setup. Now, remember I, told, I mentioned before, you can use the Gladiator to reset. At this point, I don't think it's actually worth resetting the Golden Glow, uh, given that she'd already got her skill charged. So I don't think I would uh, retreat the Golden Glow to get that last buff. But it could be an opportunity that we can use the Gladia to reset the Aya after, once we get, let's say, Black Knight, Beanstalk, um, Chaobi, one of the other caster buffs, and get that fifth buff going. Again, I don't think it's too much of a problem here, but I will see how that goes. I'm going to go ahead and set up another Vanguard. And I'll rotate the Gumi out so that we get more we get more defender buffs going here. That was a little sketchy, wasn't it?
I thought that we had caught them all with Ea, but apparently not. Bosses down. So a lot of my problems in this run came from the fact that I didn't actually fully stack up this Aya, and her skill and damage was not as high and as fast as I would generally like. Um, but again, not too not too difficult in this particular run. I'm going to go ahead and retreat this. And uh, place uh sense of kiss equal. Alright, well, apologies for the small mistakes there, but that should give you a good example of how to clear that map with the same team that I've been using for everything. And thank you for watching. Hope that was uh, useful for you. Let me know down in the comments if you have any suggestions or other, other questions. And... As always, thank you for watching. Again, this is part four of four, so there are three other videos for you to watch. All equally as boring because I don't like SSS. Uh, but if you are if you are hunting medals and you wanted something that was consistent, easy to use every single week, well, here you go. So thanks for watching and have a great day.